Hello, everyone. Hard to follow Ice Cube and Beam before your lunch time. So I hope I get to see some more people coming in. Uh, but thank you for having me. Uh, today is very special after hearing uh, so many uh, talented people uh, talking about what is going on in the world today. So uh, my turn will be a little bit about talking what's happening today. Um, we all know that we live in an unprecedented time and we hear all the time that it's about digital world and all these uh, things that are happening in front of us. But at the same time today, it's about what are we doing about it? We know that the consumers are savvy. We know that the younger consumers are kind of running the world and they're very, very smart and they're ahead of any generation. So uh, I was reading some data and when you, when you're working and doing things for that Gen Z consumer, it's incredible to see that 57% um, of them have like friends in internet that have never met and they're considered the closer friends, right? And, and they interact with them every day. Um, the world is streaming. You have heard during the morning what's going on in the streaming world and the, the world of subscription and gaming. And, and as, a, as a brand builder, you always kind of have to be aware of it, but at the same time, as I said at the beginning, is what are you doing about it? 2020 is the year where 50 billion cell phone users are gonna be connected to internet. So when you hear this data, it's, it's super important to, for us to um, act and do something. So this day we live in the intersection between sports, music, culture, tech. They all blend with each other, they all together. And we live in this world where we, as brand marketeers, we need to know where we sit and how we interact with, this, uh, with these categories. I'm gonna tell you a little bit about uh, what I've done and the projects that I have led and the projects that I have collaborated through the years. I, I've been very fortunate to be part of this industry for the last over, a little bit over 20 years and you can take me now. But uh, it's, been, it's, been, it's been a great learning experience. I, I recently, just a few weeks ago, I, I left Beats by Dre to pursue other opportunities that I am working on. Um, but it's, it's been such a, a, a pleasure to have work at Nike and Beats. And I'm going to share a couple of uh, case studies and things where we continue to drive culture and, and really affect what's going on in the world. And not too long ago, um, we had a challenge to kind of bring some of the uh, Nike franchises back to be trends in trends and be relevant for the younger consumer. And, um, and we decided to create this sneaker holiday that some of the bloggers and YouTubers and, 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 and creators of content said that it's a, it's a lame holiday, right? Because it didn't have that edge or it didn't have the credibility because we were creating something for the scratch, from the scratch. We started with 10,000 units. We started with very limited budget. We started to think and dream that there was gonna be a movement. And, and we said, let's, let's give it a try. And, and that was only five years ago. And while well, we started with 10,000 units, the following year went to 100,000 units, the following year went to half a million units. Uh, we started executing one country to 10 countries to 30 countries in the world in just 24 hours. So I'm gonna show you, um, and the reason I'm telling you this story because for me it starts in a, in a, in, in a business table. It started with a few of us. And, and then when you move to selling internally, it's all about localization. It's all about bringing that blending on sports, culture, fashion, trends, and really making sure that you kind of have a sharp point of view and go ahead of the trend and ahead of things that are happening and you bet on it. Right, so I'm gonna show you just a small tease because I don't have a lot of time because you, eat, because you need to eat. So let's start with, uh, with this example. This was is about bringing the brand to life. Bring 
bring the pattern plan locally, putting the product in front of you, really heroizing the product, making sure we bring digital and physical experiences together and making sure, and I can go through a lot of different countries and then ending on my home country in Mexico, but, uh, but it was about enabling your teams in the country with the same strategy, the same goal that you have from a global perspective and bringing the consumers in and let the consumers be the voice for you. And you can argue and say, yeah, but you have a strong brand like Nike doing this. Yeah, but the franchise was not relevant during that time. When we talk about sports, and sports transcends into culture, but sports drive culture. And, and I, I absolutely love what LeBron and other guys in basketball are doing because, you know, one of my favorite moments in, in, in the basketball season is All-Star Weekend because it's just not uh, about the tournament. It's about the joy of the game, and it's about how... Um, the players are, are showing the world, not just the U.S., about what they can offer on and off the field, on and off the court. And, and it's, a, it's a very um, special moment for them because it's about celebrating who they are and what they do. And, you know, through this tweet or Instagram post from LeBron, it's always showing us... Uh, what, it, what they involve in fashion and culture as well. So uh, very excited to, to, to be part of this, who, which um, I wanted to share an example when LeBron came to LA. We had uh, the pleasure to work with the Lakers and, and the brief was different for us. Uh, it was coming to our home court uh, a, a bit and, and we said, this, uh, we have to welcome him through the lens of the community, through the lens of the Angelinos, through the lens of a city that is very different from the rest where he's been. And a city that could actually hate him or love him. And, and, and we need to prepare the home turf for him. So this is a way that we interpret through not just a TV spot, but through a point of view on sports culture and, and tech because we needed to make sure that we provided the tool to actually stay above the noise, to actually tell the team and, and the world and the consumer and the basketball fans that as a brand, we were gonna help him focus on the game and avoid all the noise that he could have in, in a place that is hard to conquer like LA. So let's take a look. So, um, music. We all love music, but if we use it the way that we can use it, it becomes center of your message. A beats what um, I was always trying to do when I was leading the brand is about really maintaining and, and being the epicenter of what you create because it's the way that the best way that you can connect the, um, with the consumers and with your audience. Um, the headphone is, is the instrument to deliver the best music experience. Um, this example that you see in the back, I, I don't know if you remember, but two years ago, uh, it came uh, as a movement, uh, kind of a, a digital movement, a content movement, that it was a, the, the Lemon Dance a Challenge. Um, what I love about this example is that it came to us through Pharrell and, and the NRD team, and within a week, we were able to produce a spot, to find an iconic place in LA, to shoot it, to launch it uh, digitally, to have over 14 million views in hours because the consumer voted that it was at the right time, it was with the right talent, the right music, at the right moment. So we were only the 
the collaborators, I don't want to say creators because creators are the musicians, right? We were the co-creators and the partners to really bring everything together and have fun with it. So um, another um, example here is fashion. Fashion moves at the speed of culture and sometimes moves ahead of culture. In this particular moment, every, the, the, the project started on a dinner table with LeBron. He's fascinated with Tom Brown. He loves Tom Brown suits, it's what he wears. And it was such a special moment for them. It was his last season at the Cavs and they were actually at playoffs. So we saw that as an opportunity to really uh, being part of that outfit, being part of that moment. But it wasn't just about the hookup. It's about the, the, the iconic tunnel uh, walking that um, they have and the team has, and they make a statement. They always make a fashion statement, but it goes beyond fashion. It's about the culture of the game. It's how well prepared they are. It's how great they look because they're gonna kill it on the field. So uh, we had a lot of fun with it. We collaborated with Tom Brown. So our Studio 3 headphones, which he was a product of the season, were able to actually deliver in an in a amazing special package um, that it fits um, their suit. And it was a surprise for them in their lockers before they actually change um, to go to, to the game and, and do that special walkthrough. So you can, you can read how uh, Highest Novati, Esquire, Esquire G G GQ actually talk about it. And, and we didn't care if we had the headline or no. We knew that we were part of the story and we were part of their focus uh, to actually win the game that night. Sports inspires fashion. Have you, you recognize who is in that picture? Virgil Abloh, right? So that moment, you could argue that right now he's doing maybe 20, 30 collaborations. That moment, it was his first. It was when he was working in one of his first times he ever collaborated with, with Nike. Um, it's about staying ahead of the game. It's about really doing something new and different and bet on that collaborator. That was before anybody actually went big with him and I'm talking about five years ago, when he was planning something to launch in 18 or 24 months. So it was about his writing, it was his story, you know, it was about the trust and, and us putting a Jordan shoe in front of him and, and doing something iconic that meant something for the consumers in, in, in terms of storytelling. It's about how you actually tell the story and how you actually drop that shoe in a moment when it can be relevant and create a scarcity. But the community needs to authenticate it. This is very close to my heart. I was part of the core team when we were developing the launch of Sneakers App and really create this uh, amazing destination for the consumer to actually learn about sneakers, tell the stories about the sneakers, create boss with us, being our brand ambassadors, and of course, try conversion, right? You were one click away for the first time in 2015 when we launched it to, to really uh, uh, buy the coolest shoe in the market. But it wasn't just about that. If we didn't get the recognition from the community, it wasn't successful. So you see a lot of posts with this now. You see a lot of posts on YouTube with uh, people uh, validating um, or reviewing the, the sneakers that are part of this destination. And what is, this is what matters for a brand like Nike because the community, the community really, really authenticates it. Uh, tech is part of culture. I mean, when you talk about what you're using today, your headphones, your AirPods, your phone, who you live with, I mean, it's part of your outfit, it's part of who, what, what you start your day with because it's your, your magazine and everything. But we, well, Beats wanted to take it uh, beyond that. And what uh, we did in terms of partnering with people like Ambush, Undefeated, and Sakai in other, in other uh, 
projects, it was about really developing and being um, a fashion statement because you already use these products. And how can we make sure that there's uh, products for everyone that wanted to stay ahead of the trends or ahead of the pack and really doing something do, um, different and personal? A lot of brands want to win with youth. And what they need to know is it's not easy to win with youth this time of days, right? But what we need to do is how you get to know the consumer, how you use your data, how you actually um, get to know them and through connect emotionally. But it's about the combination of your right side and your left side of the brand brain. You cannot be just a storytelling and not know the consumer. We cannot just do uh, data and brand analytics and performance marketing and not be a storyteller. We have to be very careful in these days because everybody is so fascinated with subscription model and, one, and, and the things that will get you to uh, unlock that conversion. But you have to build your brand first. You need to know and serve the consumer in a different way. Uh, this example that is here is um, Nike Plus in the back. And, and you're familiar with what Nike uh, as a member is doing with you. It's about serving you personally. I won't get the, the same feed as you if you're not a runner or you love basketball or you love training or you just love shopping, right? So it is personalized experience and that's what matters. And it matters for you more than anybody else. So it's personal, it's about getting to know you and as a brand and marketeer, you have to be smart on how you use that data, right? And making sure that you have to go back to the consumer and tell them what's new for them in their own feed. If you do it the way that we used to do marketing 10, 15 years ago, you're going to lose them immediately, in seconds, because it's just not relevant anymore. And we lose you, and we don't get you back. The personal connection, I already talked about it, is, is ha we have to be going and, 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 and really going deeper into what's ma what matters for that consumer. Today, teens and tweens and all the way to 20-year-old, they only spend like five, six, eight seconds with any type of content. They're content creators as well. As well. So they go and switch channel to channel, and they don't care if, they don't, if, if you don't connect with them. They just leave you. So we have to be smart, and we have to be personal, and we, we have to be real to them and with them. I already talked about it. There's a lot of new brands in the marketplace that are surprisingly smart because they know who to talk to, because they actually, the creators, are young generations, are young consumers, because they know that they can stay there. I think, and I was talking to somebody yesterday, and it's about staying niche, but then growing, and knowing your consumer, and start kind of betting in something that is coming to give you the volume, and give you the connection, and the reach that you need to do. I'm fascinating with, um, global markets. I mean, the, 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 the way that we do global marketing right now is very different than 10, 15 years ago. Global market is, in, is with a global insight, but with a local execution, but with a local voice. 15, 20 years ago at Nike, we used to just do campaigns globally and translate it locally, right? We just put subtitles or change the dot voice and that's it. Right now, it's a global brief and just do it means a lot of different things in different places. It's, you barely see uh, campaigns outside of the US that are different, uh, that are the same. Um, in, in different markets. Uh, Nike uses only these global moments like Olympics, World Cup, to really do one, one voice, one brand. But the rest of the time, every single market has their own voice. And it makes me really, really proud because we spent a lot of years trying to kind of sell that to the company and making sure that you use and, and utilize your local talent to develop that voice. Right now is, is the way that the brand is execution, executing. Um, sorry, the clicker is not helping me. It's, 
this is not new for you. I just wanted to remind you that the, the same, the formula that has worked in marketing for a long, long time continues to be working is how you do it and the execution of it, how it comes across is how it's changing and evolving. This, the, the angles and the arms and the extensions continue to be the same. And I, I, purposely put uh, certain functions that apply to this uh, audience and to these themes, but you can, um, you can change it depending on the industry where you are to evolve it the, 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 and, and depending on the message and depending on the campaign you're launching. Uh, but it's important to think in 360 degree because you're gonna do a consumer journey, an ecosystem and personal connection with that consumer and it's important to do it through this lens. Still issue with a clicker. Um, I love her. I had the pleasure to meet Rosalia. Uh, and you know, she's an amazing artist. And, and I think she represents what, what I wrote there. Um, what the young consumers want for us, from us, from a brand and, 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 and market marketing perspective, they want raw storytelling. They want us to humanize talent, whether it's at the level of um, athletes like LeBron or, or musicians. They, all, they only want to see the human side of the talent now. Um, you, you see the campaigns or, or, or conversations that are around the brands today versus what it was happening even five years ago. It's very, very different because um, even the content from their own creators, that talent, they, they like to show us behind the scenes. They like to show us how human they are or how imperfect they are as well. So um, my recommendation to you if you're in this field is do something like that. Do something new for your brand. Test your creative. Mind your data. Uh, tell the consumer which one, ask the consumer which one you like to to really go on and 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 kill it on the field with some validation of the consumers. I think sometimes uh, as a marketeers we have the ego so big that we believe that everything we're creating is perfect for them and we don't want to test it. I think this world in in the world of digital it has opened our doors to do something completely different and be able to test and experiment with the content that we create. Co-create. The world of co-creation for me is fascinating because you have a lot of young talent that are willing to share their talent with you. So they're just waiting for you to give them a platform. So try new things. Try to do something that you can see with bigger collaborators and artists, with bigger brands like Apple or Beats or, or Nike, uh, and start with your, with your own and test uh, with new emerging talent. And these brands continue to do that with a smaller and, and smaller talent that can bet on it. Um, I, I remember um, a long time ago, we were working on a musician that she was just playing her guitar at the Grove. And, and, and everybody was asking, why, why do you bring that to the event if, you, if, you, um, if she's not that relevant yet? It's because you cannot trust that God and, and you see her personality that she was, she was gonna shine and, and she's a, a great star right now. So um, be always on. From a marketing perspective, we always talk about this 365 connection. We always uh, wanna do this, but be, be, we have the, the, uh, the opportunity to do it or not because of the budget, right? So be always on is not easy when you actually run in marketing campaigns and marketing budget in a medium-sized company, but it's, uh, it's real if you, you know how to do efficiency, uh, efficiencies with your money. And, and you know, this is a great example from a Nike Training Club. I don't know if you have it in your, in your apps, but it's uh, on Nike Running Club, 
but it's basically it's a, it's a personal running companion, no? And and you can actually do a physical experience. We started doing and uh, run clubs outside of the stores, outside of communities in the parks, and it doesn't cost you that much. It's about really engaging and and combining the digital and physical experiences uh, with the consumers. And I had the fortune to kind of be part of the uh, of the uh, leaders who who actually establish uh, different uh, run, run, and run communities and run clubs across the globe outside of the direct-to-consumer stores. And it's so fun to see it incorporate the partnership with Apple through the Sport Watch and seeing how it continues to evolve in the communities around the world. Um, I want to... I want to close to what is success looks like. Uh, yes, we have all the ROIs. Yes, we have to do the sell-through um, at the highest level. Yes, we have to continue to increase, increase conversion um, at every level because that's a business. You're running a business. But at the same time, in the cultural side, because we're here today to talk about sports, entertainment, tech, it's about how you bring your brand to the conversation, how you create um, this community engagement. How do you continue having the biggest engagement and conversation from these young consumers that can leave you tomorrow, but they can lead with you if, if they decided not to leave you because you're, you're relevant today and tomorrow. And you can create, and you have to create a cultural um, impact. So um, in the last one, I just want to see, show you a little bit of a recap of the things that I have worked on on the, on the company that I absolutely love, that is Beats. And I want to share with you some things that we did across the world. Thank you.